welcome back. Sorry we had a bit of technical difficulties, but we're here at Caddis Island County Park and the Cooper Environmental Center. Again, I'm Nikki Vernaccio, one of the senior park naturalists, and today I have with me our Cuban tree frogs. Now, usually here at the Nature Center, we love to showcase plants and animals that are native to Ocean County, New Jersey. So native means that a plant or animal naturally occurs in that type of area like our gray tree frogs that Megan showed you a few weeks ago. Well, we have two frogs that we call non-native. As I said, they're called Cuban tree frogs, and these frogs are naturally native to the Bahamas, to Cuba, to the Cayman Islands, is where they're naturally found. But they're actually considered in the United States here as an invasive species. So in an invasive species is an animal or plant plant that kind of makes its way to where it doesn't belong and sometimes can take over and be a bit of a pest. So let me tell you a little bit about these Cuban tree frogs. So about a hundred years ago when they were shipping uh, cargo containers from those islands into the United States, most commonly into Florida, these little frogs would find their way into shipping containers. They would hide in nooks and crannies. They'd use their sticky toed feet like they have for being a tree frog. And they would hide and find their way into those containers and then eventually find their way into the natural areas in Florida. So these guys are actually considered a pest species down in Florida. So you might be wondering, well, Nikki, how in the world are they in New Jersey and why do you have them here at the Nature Center? a really good question. So about two years ago, it was near Christmas time in December, and a family came up to the Nature Center carrying a container just like this. And they said, we just drove our RV from Florida, Ocala, Florida, up to New Jersey for the winter. And as we were unpacking our stuff, a frog plopped out of the generator of the RV right into the driveway. So they picked up that frog and they said this frog is not something that belongs here in New Jersey and they brought it here to Caddis Island. Well we realized what it was, that it was a Cuban tree frog and then us as naturalists kind of were stumped as to what do we do? You know we do really like to keep non-native non animals but we couldn't release this creature into New Jersey um, because it doesn't belong here and we even tried sending it back to Florida and Florida doesn't want them either. Um, so this guy here, um, he's hiding right here in our rocks. They're very quiet, particularly during the day and still. He's our friend that came up on that RV. He was about the size of a quarter. Um, he's about tripled his size at this point. They're very smooth, not too warty. And the interesting thing is that they don't, they kind of change colors. There'll be a plasticky gray and then all of a sudden they might have dark stripes on them. They could be greens or browns or blacks, which makes them really kind of unique. This little one here, this March, we got a similar phone call right before we closed, and they trailered their boat up from Florida to New Jersey, and as they were cleaning out their boat, found this frog inside their boat. So this frog hitched a ride all the way from Florida up to New Jersey. So that's two Cuban tree frogs who have migrated to New Jersey via a vehicle that they've hitched a ride on. Now these guys, like I said in Florida, they are a pest because they eat the native frogs that are there. They're a large tree frog. They can get to be about the size of my fist, about six inches. And they just eat anything that kind of comes around them. They eat native tree frogs that are there. They eat their tadpoles. They eat insects. Um, just about anything that they can come across. They also like to kind of make their homes in places that are kind of a, kind of a nuisance spot. I know I have a friend who live down in Florida, and they have Cuban tree frogs that live on their lights, their porch lights. They sit on top. They live there at night. And at night, particularly after midnight, they call. And they're really, really loud. And then come morning, they go to leave their house for work, 
and there's frog poop all over the porch and down the wall. So they have to actually sweep the frog poop off. So <laughs> these are something that these frogs can do. They also get into things. They get into electrical boxes and short out power. They also can get into people's toilets, can you imagine that, and clog drains. And they even take over birdhouses. So this is a species that's very adaptable. They can change and they can go with the flow. And, you know, as I said, are actually doing some harm down in the Florida populations. Now, they also breed um, very easily. Uh, many frogs and toads might need a specific type of pond or a lake to breed in. But Cuban tree frogs simply need water that doesn't have any fish in it. I think because the fish might eat up their eggs. But that includes breeding in a bucket, breeding in your swimming pool, breeding in your bird bath. So they can breed very, very easy. So their numbers just skyrocket. So when we did get these guys, we, we just were deciding what we were going to do with them. And we did a little research and even called a, an expert down in Florida, uh, Dr. Steve Johnson, um, from the University of Florida is doing a tremendous amount of research on these frogs um, and we told him our story and he's actually including these two frogs uh, in his data on how these frogs migrate and move um, all around and all about which is kind of neat to be able to contribute that. So these guys will live their lives here like I said they can get to be about the size of my fist um, they may live together at some point. I'm not even sure, to be honest, if we can put them together. But we might kind of split out their tank so that they're sort of separate but alike. Um, I can't put them into um, the exhibit with our native frogs because they would certainly eat our native frogs. So they're kind of our invasive species ambassadors, so to speak, kind of uh, telling their story how they kind of got here. Now, the interesting thing about these frogs' skin is that these frogs are actually considered to be a poisonous creature. Um, so we never handle them with our bare hands. Um, we really don't handle them much at all. Um, but they secrete a substance from their skin that is an irritant, particularly to your nose and to your eyes. So if you were to handle this frog and then maybe rub your eyes or, you know, itch your nose, you would have a reaction almost like an allergy runny eyes, tickly sneezy nose, and they can almost induce an asthma type of attack. So they're really just these strange creatures. Also they have blue bones. Can you believe that? Blue bones. It might be hard to see in this one, but a real young one that has his legs stretched out, um, you can actually see inside that they're very dark in color with these blue bones, which I think is just the craziest thing. So if you have any questions about these tree frogs and those big eyes and those cute little feet, uh, send me uh, some questions in your comments. Oop. <laughs> Getting a little active here. They're very quick and agile. They're a little tricky to catch, I'll tell you that. <laughs> very smart, I think, too. But to be able to survive and adapt the way they do, I guess they would have to be that way. Well, thank you so much for having me today. Again, my name is Nikki Vernaccio from Caddis Island County Park and the Cooper Environmental Center. Enjoy your day.